Welcome to this episode of Eureka and we are going to have a very interesting and very exciting conversation with Dr. B.K. Das, who is the director of Central Inland Fisheries Research Institute, a constant unit of ICIR, Indian Council for Agriculture Research. Do you know, out of the total fish availability today, something close to about 50% comes from inland fisheries, though the fish immediately evokes us only the image of sea. Inland fisheries is very important. Before we start our conversation, let's take a quick look at his brief profile. Keep watching Eureka. Inland fishery contributes around 60% to the India's total fish production. But over the recent years, inland aquatic resources are gradually depleting with environmental contaminants. According to fisheries experts, aqua life conservation and restoration are key for the sustainable management of aquatic ecosystems. Dr. Basanta Kumar Das is one of the leading fish health management scientists of the country who is working in this sector. And currently, he is the director of the ICAR, Central Inland Fisheries Research Institute, Kolkata, and also the president of Inland Fisheries Society of India. Dr. Das did his bachelor's, master's and PhD from College of Fisheries, Orissa University of Agricultural Technology, Bhuvaneshwar. And after that, he did post-doctorate in fish immunology from Aberdeen University, UK in the year 2006-2007 and also went for his second post-doctorate in nanosensors from University of California, USA in the year 2010. His research is mostly concentrated on aquatic animal health management along with prospecting novel biomolecules of industrial application of global importance. Dr. Das has published many international research papers and developed medicines for ornamental fish diseases and molecular diagnostic kit for the Lapia Lake virus Besides the technology like GI cage, HDP pen, cage grow feed for fish which were commercialized. He has also registered the design of the tissue embedding machine in the patent office. He did lots of extension training programs for capacity building in fish disease management and inland fisheries management for the farming community of the country. Dr. Das has received numerous awards and honours, including Best Indian Fisheries Scientist by Professional Fisheries Graduates Forum India and Krushak Ratna and Krushak Gaurav Award in the year 2016 and 17 respectively, and he is among the most cited scientists in the fisheries sector. Thank you, sir, for being with us. It's a very wonderful opportunity. It's a very nice institute with uh, 70 years of uh, legacy. And uh, you are heading uh, this institute at a crucial time when India is uh, planning to uh, increase its uh, production in food and also increase the farm income by at least twice. I mean, we know that there is a huge crisis in agriculture and we need to come out of it. The farmers have to have a better deal. We know about it. Uh, let me start with uh, this uh, question. I mean, uh, usually people think when we talk about fish, ocean. And uh, fisher people who are living in uh, the edges of uh, ocean, who go into ocean to fish. How important is uh, inland fishing? If you will see the ocean concept in the earlier, in 1950s, only the capture fisheries from the ocean contribute more higher. As in today, the inland fisheries contribute 65 percent of the fish production of the India, in which around 80 percent comes from the aquaculture and the rest portions comes the inland fishery. Again, inland fisheries contribute uh, 1 million metric tons to the sector also. Mm -hmm. And not only the fishers, they leave, take their livelihood from the ocean, but you will see 12 million of fishers, they are dependent upon this 
inland sectors with the lake, river, reservoirs. Besides, the persons entrepreneurs they are dependent in the aquaculture sectors. The resource is very huge in India. See, looking at the diversity of the type of the fishes that he found in this and a rich biodiversity hotspot in the country as well as in the globe. And if you look into the prosperity of the inland sector when government, our honorable prime minister is forecasting the doubling farmers incomes, the only sector after if you look into the animal science, fishery is the only sector which can double the farmers incomes that were projected by 2022. This institute is uh, having a huge legacy of uh, 70 years. I mean, you are heading the institute now, but if somebody has to ask you that uh, what this institute has done in the 70 long years for nation building, what would you put as main uh, points? You look into this, the institute was born in 17th March 1947. It's a pre-independent institute. It is the second institute after Central Marine Fisheries Institute okay. in the sector for the sectorial development. Uh -huh. And it is given birth to another four institutes like Central Inland of Central Institute of Freshwater Aquaculture, Central Institute of Brackish Water Aquaculture, Directorate of Cold Water Fisheries, and National Bureau of Fish Genetic Resources. Okay. If we will see, it brings into 1985 these four institutes. Before that, it has so much epoch making technologies like induced breeding technology, which leads to the blue revolution in the country, and which the fish you are available in any time in the plate nowadays because of this induced breeding. It was born, done by so the… So, can you just describe this induced breeding a bit more? I mean, how does it actually make uh, fish available all through the seasons? Induced breeding technology is artificial hypophysation. Generally, fish do not breed. The carp do not breed in a confinement mm. and that required a simulation conditions. Mm. So, due to hypophysation, putting the hormone injections, pituitary glands, the first induced breeding was done by Dr. Ali Kuni and Dr. Hiralal Chaudhary, the remote place of Odisha, that Anugul and Kila fish farms, where the, the fish breed and due to the breeding was controlled. So, India or the scientist can breed any time, any type of fish and get the spawn and fingerlings that are available for the culture practices. These techniques that was developed, the revolutionized as the carp culture technology in the country. Later, we give the so much training to the foreign governments and foreign institutions and SIFA and there is FIRT, Freshwater Aquaculture Research Training, is a serve at the network of aquaculture center, Pacific, the lead center, regional lead center where it gives so much training to the multinational. Again, to propagate to this, the second technology comes the composite fish culture technology. Okay. Composite fish culture technology, the culturing of fish is a multiple culture, six species compositions mm -hmm. taking into the niche of the ponds, mm. where the top layer is two fish, which is a cartla and silver carp. Mm. And the column layer is rohu and grass carp, bottom layer is mrigal and common carp. So, so, this is like uh, you are trying for uh, multi-cropping in uh, agriculture form. You are saying that uh, using the three-dimensional uh, 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 you know, situation in a uh, uh, water source, you are saying that we can grow multiple uh, kind of fish in the same pond. That's what you are saying, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, Again, we have the third technology. Recently, we have the C3 as one, the cage culture. Cage culture, we have a large number of reservoirs in the small, medium and major reservoirs. And we have advised the cage culture in a medium and large reservoirs, taking 0.1 percent of the water area into the cage culture. And here, if we we'll see a cage of dimension of 90 meter cube water area, you can grow minimum of 3 tons feet, that is a Pangasiodon hypothalamus. A small water area growing so much fish is a huge potential for the sector also. And Sifri also designed a case and which has been commercialized this year in the Platinum Jubilee year. Okay, okay. So, you are talking about uh, three major uh, contributions. One is that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, growing carp uh, fingerlings at a uh, different time. I mean, second is uh, multiple uh, fishers in the same pond. I mean, and the third is this cage. Any other major challenges that you solved in the 70 years? So, we solve major challenges like pen culture within wetlands is a major area. So, in situ rearing of the fingerlings in the pen and again this pen will be also is a biodiversity 
if we will see it will increase the biodiversity of these wetlands because it is a um, felt that wetlands are the heart of this any of the fisheries all the activities major activity takes place in the wetlands. Again the institute has worked in the Ganga river system for the biodiversity conservation. Okay. We are the partner of NMC Namami Ganga programs. Mm -hmm. Again Hilsa is a major prized for fish like by the, this region of the country. The institute will work dedicatedly for the Hilsa fisheries and recently for last five years in collaboration with SIFA and SIVA, we are trying to develop the captive breeding of the Hilsa, which if Hilsa will be available in the pond, then you may, people in the Bengal, Odisha and these regions, they like the pond and it's a high value species. And again now we are thinking for doing some of the conservation and productivity enhancement in the inland open waters like wetlands, reservoirs and rivers in which earlier the full sea, the productivity of these reservoirs is less than 50 kg. Now because of the SIFRI's interventions and governance pattern to the respective state governments and this has been increased more than 250 kg. Okay, and from some, 50 to 250. Yeah. That's and really interesting. some reservoirs you will find it has gone up to 1250 kg also. Okay. But average production we have gone up to 250 kg. Besides, that's, a, that's a very, very uh, interesting uh, aspect of how your institute has contributed to uh, increase in the productivity of uh, inland fisheries, particularly in, uh, uh, you know, dams and other, uh, 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 I mean, water reservoirs. We'll have to take a very short break. We'll continue this conversation. We'll take a very short break. Don't go away. Do you know, next to milk, fish is the main source of non-vegetarian protein in India? It is a very, very important sector for uh, not just making the income of farmers but also for food security in India. We will continue this conversation. Keep watching Eureka. Welcome back to Eureka and we are having a very interesting conversation with Dr. B. K. Das who is the Director of Central Inland Fisheries Research Institute which is a constituent of Indian Council for Agriculture Research. Do you know, at the time of independence, the fisheries contributed to about 0.5 grams of protein per day per capita. But today, it has increased to about 3.5 grams protein per capita per day. This is a substantial increase and if we want food security and if we want people to have a healthy life, protein is a very important aspect and fish is a, one of the major source of protein in India. We are having a very wonderful conversation of how this institute has contributed to the nation building before the break. Now, I am going to talk about something very interesting. He is a doctor. You would have heard doctor who are treating humans, maybe uh, your pets, veterinary doctor. He is a fish doctor. You are a fish doctor. Yes. That is a very, very interesting idea. Many of us won't even know that such a profession existed. How did you land up in this uh, situation? If you look into these things, when I am in school, so I belong to a backwater area of Balestar district of Odisha. Okay. And in my schooling days, I went to fishing also. So when I completed my science and appeared in the agricultural examinations, I find to prefer to take the fishery science as a subject. I have never looked back whether an agricultural sciences, veterinary sciences and engineering are seats are vacant. So quickly we choose this profession. Mm -hmm. Soon after that, our completion of my master's degree, then I got the RS examinations. And I am fond of taking these educations. And fortunately, I was done my PhD and master's degree on disease mm -hmm. under the guidance of Dr. Subhash Chandra Mukherjee, okay. who is the expert in disease. Uh -huh. Then I have a fascination. Since then, I work on the many, many various aspects of disease diagnosis, control and advising service to the farmers. Very, to very interesting. Let me ask you this question. Most of us would not know about it. So, it is a very curious uh, question. See, if I am ill, I go to a doctor. The doctor looks at my pulse, maybe uh, use a stethoscope, maybe uh, put a thermometer, maybe put me through a, uh, let us say, a scan machine. If your pet, your dog or uh, let us say even your cow that is in your house is uh, ill, the veterinary doctor comes and does examination. So, how do people actually know there is a disease to a fish and how do you actually identify those diseases? You see, it is a critical question you asked because fish never speak. Yeah. 
the terrestrial animals speak, yeah. fish never speak. But when he is very sick, he will come to the surface of the water. Okay. That is the first symptoms of diagnosing a sick fish. Again, second thing is when you go for sample netting, sample netting, then you will find some of the sick fish. And we diagnose now without any of the instruments, mostly the clinical observations and the behavior of this fish, then you identify in the first line of defense because we have to save the loss faced by the farmers. Mm -hmm. There we have a treatment strategy, advise some of the strategy for treatment to the farmers. Again, we bring the samples to the laboratory for the different level of diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Then after diagnosis, and we again suggest if the fish is still more, there is mortality, then again we advise to check the mortality. So, you have been working uh, in developing uh, treatment strategies and uh, medicines and also how to treat uh, this sick uh, fish organisms, right? So, what would you say as something that you felt very happy in your whole research career? Something that you developed which actually had an impact? You will see in my 22 years of research career as a scientist at various capacities, the initial phase of the life we work mostly in the breeding and other things like the institute mandate. Later in 2000, I have worked on the disease aspect since then. For if you see for the national importance, we have worked in my PhD later part, we have like a uh, formulations or the cypermethrin, the uh, pesticide that are used for controlling the argulos, which is a dreaded disease in the Rohu culture. Uh -huh. And uh, with that, so many formulation by industry has come up and their controlling process is going on. It is cypermethrin in various trade name. Again, we have a formulation I have brought out that is known as CIFA cure, okay. controlling the ornamental fish diseases, the bacterial and fungal diseases. Then I have worked with the CIFAX, the part of this latter part for controlling various episodic ulcerative syndrome, which is a causative organism and added pathogens in the freshwater aquacultures. Thirdly, I have worked some of the part, later part of the vaccine development. Okay. Along with the CCMB, we have worked on the DNA vaccine of ETADA and that process. And I have developed a polyvalent vaccines. Mm. And we tried two years back in Andhra Pradesh with the oral delivery systems mm. giving in the feed. And it found that it is very successful. The whole idea of this vaccination strategy, because Andhra Pradesh, if you see every 100 meters, mm. there is a fish doctor is sitting okay. and they advise lot of chemicals to be used in aquaculture. To make a safe fish to eat, mm -hmm. we thought that at least 20 percent replacement of these chemicals. It is a very, very important area in which uh, your institute has been working for quite long, right? So, what is the scenario of inland fisheries in India? What is the kind of uh, growth that we are seeing? How many people are involved? How many how much area is involved? What is the scenario today? If you look into the inland fishery sector, excluding aquaculture, if you see 12 million people are dependent upon the inland fish sector. And look at the Ganga river system which goes from Gangotri to Ganga Sagar and most of the 60 percent of the populations are dependent on fishing. Okay. And we have studied that the average income is 3000, initially it is 3000 rupees and only last year we again have studied and it has gone to 7,000 rupees in this in the fishing okay. and that much of this amount that fishermen brings from the natural system and she is a very less and is a sectorial development we always think that increasing the biodiversity and giving a conservation values to this and simultaneously the livelihood of fishers, fishers can be more. more. So, okay. for that we always talking with the NMCG you know, with the things we have taken a program under National Mission for Clean Ganga for the ranching aspect of the river Ganga in which… What is ranching aspect? Ranching of, it means the collecting the brooders from the same environment okay. and the breeding in the confinement, again releasing the fingerlings into the Ganga or same river from where you have brought. That See, is one of the problem uh, or uh, one of the change, what can say, it may not be a problem, but it is a challenge actually. But if you look at something like a uh, river. Uh, once upon a time, it used to flow from its uh, origin to, uh, uh, you know, ocean almost unimpeded, right? So, if uh, there is a fish species over there, it can use almost the whole part of the river or a large part of the river. 
now you have dams you have lots of obstructions right so it means that we have in a way impeded the uh, natural ecosystem of many aquatic life right how does it affect a uh, open source system like a river and how are you taking up that challenge you see ecosystem health is a major things that we have to consider if we we'll see independence we have very few dams now we have 30000 dams has come in the major river systems that is needed also because we require irrigation we want to increase the agricultural productions we use want to use water judiciously that you know but besides that we should look into the aqua life that is minimum environment flow mm. we have constructing dam and barrages so we have given the guidelines to cwc mm -hmm. and different bureau of indian standards to make the minimum environment flow to make the health of the rivers to live mm -hmm. and restoring the aqua life okay. if there is a minimum environmental flow is there then fish will able to breed then if a breed will living will be there then aqua life can be restored that's interesting so but uh, even when uh, in the current situation the aqua life uh, should have reduced right i mean the number of species would have reduced the number of uh, spe i mean uh, life forms in each of these species would have also reduced right so how are you tackling this reduction in the biomass within the uh, open systems you look into this we have studied maybe 20 years 30 years in time scale the biodiversity is drastically reduced then there is a climate change in global warming so we are looking for some of the climate resilient species mm -hmm. like chana or puntios these are the some of the species are climate resilient so we are advising to have a breeding value of this climate resilient species that can be restocked for the biodiversity conservation of point of view no besides the stocking for the farmers for their livelihood so these species and we are advising to the state government because this fishery is a domain of states and we are advising the state government and national biodiversity authorities and other governmental and ngos to work up on it and have a respective guidelines again we have a awareness can farmer sensitizations or fisher sensitization is the one of the issues for like mesh size regulations mm -hmm. then close seasons these are the some of the issues we are addressing and timely we are advising to the government and sensitizing the fishers to do these things see if the dams and other kinds of obstruction are one of the major challenges of open systems if you look at uh, surface water uh, like a pond or uh, you know small water body the uh, leaching of uh, pesticides and other chemicals that we put in agriculture land into this water body would be a major challenge right what kind of impact that it has had on uh, aqua life and also fisheries if you look into the one of the study we done in the ganga river the milt was available in 1950s maybe 45 liters mm -hmm. now that milt has reduced to 15 liters this indicates the fishes are not breeding mm -hmm. or the brood fishes gradually coming down and the young one that are being recruited when is go to the smaller stage into the wetlands there because of pesticide run up other things that has come down again if you see earlier in 30 years back the paddy fields are rich in this type of fishes and anybody belongs to a village life could have seen and could have caught in their paddy fields and today the system is totally changed we do not find any of the fish in the paddy field except some of the organic states like the, if you will see in the northeastern states there are some states they go for paddy com fish culture you can find because okay. they are completely organic state. to look into this aspect we should have a definite like if for somebody because it is relating to our breeding is related to monsoon again all this cropping or agricultural cropping related to monsoon but we should see some of the pesticides in the fourth generation which are being used they are biodegradable within 10 to 15 days okay. so the, the farmer should be sensitized and because of that sensitization it will reduce the use of and and use it judiciously in the sector then we can have a concept to save the aqualife future also that's okay so now uh, we don't have much time in this show but uh, this question i need to ask you what do you think are three major challenges in uh, inland fisheries which as a institute you would like to take up today i mean when we are entering into this uh, new era so we are one of the propagating the inland sectors the productivity enhancement which is we are looking with the state governments 
second is uh, bringing this sector is a vibrant in a safe is a environment contaminants for mapping the water bodies in the river reservoirs in term of pollution index mm -hmm. and third one is this small indigenous fish conservations and it will be available to these fishers for their livelihood and these are the three things in that we have done a study in SIF small and indigenous feed how it is increasing the protein values okay. increasing the uh, reducing the diseases of the rural people we have studied in Sundarban areas mm -hmm. taking 30 women beneficiaries in the account mm -hmm. we have studied their initial blood profiles mm -hmm. after feeding in one month we have seen so many serum profile have increased and anemic conditions are gradually reducing again we have a uh, challenges we have categorized 100 nutri fish index mm -hmm. where which is the protein carbohydrate fats amino acids and micronutrients some fish are rich in iodine some fish are rich in manganese if we take this fish then instead of taking the capsules for the micronutrient vitamins okay. and you can reduce that things then that is again we are trying to partner with the world bank nutri fish 1000 mm -hmm. where you can address across the globe also mm -hmm. the importance and hilsa is another concern we are trying to address this is a major challenges because if Bangladesh and India here if it is GB and Ganga, Brahmaputra, Magna, Magna basins, mm -hmm. we are trying to collaborate with the Norwegian government or other things to see the hilsa to be bred in the ponds also. Okay. It is a very, very important sector. What do you think are uh, some of the major uh, areas that we should now focus so that our uh, this sector can be uh, uh, you know secured and also developed further. If you see today production is 10.8 million metric ton. Mm. Out of that uh, shrimp is being exported. Mm. The domestic consumption is huge if you look into the, the requirement of per capita fish is huge mm. uh, and it's 19 kg. Mm. If you see that is the things but present is less 11 kg we are things and huge demand is there. And domestic sector is also contributing that you require a value chain besides research component. Whatever the fees they produce in the farm get, mm -hmm. if you do not get a price like agricultural products, mm -hmm. so the farmers will be disappointed. Okay. To promote the industry in the aquaculture and fisheries in the sector, we require a value chain systems like which a cold storage, the marketing channels, then like e-market for the fisheries the farmers will get the good benefit of the at the pond side. Mm -hmm. These are also the hurdles to promote the inland sector in a big way. Okay. That is a very interesting point and uh, with this we need to end today's conversation. It has been a very enlightening, very informative uh, conversation. Thank you for being with us in the show. Keep watching Eureka. We will come back with another conversation next week.